Hello and welcome everyone once again to the Word of the Day podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Silva, and I'm quite pleased to be back in the RAV4 studios, pleasantly explaining for you all another useful word. Today's word is manifest, and it has several related meanings. A couple that I'm confident are legitimate and useful, plus one I'm not so sure about. But joining me in the RAV4 studios today is the person who originally introduced me to the alternate, and in my opinion, at least for now, the slightly more dubious meaning, and she will attempt to persuade me and you that it is both fun and useful. So, without further ado, allow me to introduce to you another talented voice actor and amateur etymologist, Courtney. Courtney, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Jamie. Let's start off with the non-controversial meanings of manifest, the first of which is an adjective. In my opinion, this means provable or observable thanks to visible evidence. Basically, if something is manifest, you can observe and understand it just by using your senses, or maybe just common sense. The official definition goes like this, clear or obvious to the mind or eye. This is pretty similar to yours. Again, if something is manifest, you don't have to be an expert to understand what's going on. By way of example, if someone slumps over at their desk at work and starts to snore, you might refer to their manifest fatigue, their obvious tiredness. Right. There's no need to consult a doctor or wake them up to ask if they've had some late nights recently. The fact that they could use some rest is self-evident. Any observer can see it, thanks to the visible and audible signs of sleepiness this person is exhibiting. And this leads us to the verb form of manifest, which we'll focus on in this episode because it's the most common. And this refers to how characteristics of things are revealed. And it basically means to make something clear to the observer. Like, in the example you just heard, the snoring manifested the person's fatigue. That was what tipped you off to how tired they must have been. Basically, the verb manifest answers the question, how do you know? How is this truth, this reality, manifested? So, a person's appreciation for books might be manifested by their personal library, staffed by a full-time librarian. The library and librarian act as proof, as clear and obvious evidence of the indisputable fact that this person really likes books. Or perhaps someone's experience with eating hot foods would be manifested by her ordering extra spicy ramen with extra chilies on the side when she goes out for lunch with her friends. Or maybe what is really being manifested there is her need to impress her friends with what spicy food she can eat. That's possible too. And it raises an important point, that the same circumstances or facts might manifest multiple things about the subject, or maybe even conflicting things, depending on what different people perceive and how they interpret it. This is like the fable of the blind men and the elephant, which goes a little like this. A half a dozen or so blind men encounter an elephant for the very first time, and each of them happens to grab onto a different part of it. One man a leg, one man the trunk, one a tusk, etc. The elephant just stood there for all of this? Yeah, apparently it was pretty patient. Anyway, each of the blind men draws a radically different conclusion about this new beast based on the part that they're holding and what that part appeared to manifest to them about the elephant. So the guy holding the tail says, clearly elephants are basically ropes. And the one leaning up against its side is like, no, it reminds me a lot of a wall. And the one poking one of its legs is like, well, it sure seems like a tree to me. Manifest facts can still deceive, you see. And you can get pretty philosophical about manifesting stuff. Uh, There is a whole field of philosophy, for example, called epistemology, which is basically the study of knowledge itself and how people know things, and ultimately how we're able to really know anything at all. One famous French philosopher, for example, René Descartes, decided to start as basic as you can possibly get in answering the question of how we know things, and he decided to question his own existence. How could he prove that he himself was real? And after a while, he concluded, and this must have been a great relief, that yes, he did exist. How did he know? Uh, Do you mean... Oh, I mean, how is his existence manifested? Very good. So Descartes' uh, proof of existence was this very famous phrase, I think, therefore I am. So in his view, his existence was manifested by, was proven by, his own thoughts, even as his very thoughts questioned his own existence. As he put it elsewhere, quote, we cannot doubt our existence while we doubt, unquote. Like if we weren't real, we couldn't even doubt our realness in the first place. Whoa, that's deep. But 
also kind of obvious? Yeah, I guess. Uh, but that's what epistemology is all about. Questioning our understanding of what seems obvious, what seems too clear to even question. I mean, each of the blind men probably thought the nature of elephants was pretty obvious when they left the zoo, and that didn't mean a whole lot, did it? Sure, but I feel like we're talking a lot more about epistemology and elephants, and not very much about manifest. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, but they are related, remember. The word manifest is about how you know stuff, on what basis you can draw conclusions about things, just like epistemology. But let's move on to usage. In ordinary conversation, you can drop in manifest, probably the verb form, to explain to people that you're not just pulling something out of thin air. Rather, you're basing your conclusions on real evidence and experience. Usually, the phrase here is, X is manifested by Y. You use the passive voice. Now, with manifest, there is also often the connotation that you're pretty darn sure about whatever conclusion you're drawing. Because if something is manifest, it probably doesn't require special insight or knowledge to perceive. Though you may just be saying something is manifest to make it seem like anyone with two eyes or just a couple brain cells to rub together would reach the same conclusion as you. Okay, so let's go through a couple examples. Example number one. Greg's hatred of trespassers on his lawn was manifested by a surrounding fence covered with many signs saying, keep out, no hunting, fishing, skateboarding, loitering, idling or snooping. Trespassers will be prosecuted, beware of the dog, the dog will prosecute any trespassers, and so on. Example number two. I knew very early on that our Amy would be a shot put prodigy, said Mrs. Wentworth proudly. Her skills were manifested at the tender age of three when she successfully hurled a large bowl of beef stew from a sitting position, mind you, across the table, through the living room, and into the television. Half the screen is cracked to this day, but we've left it that way as a monument to what strength, grit, and just a little bit of rage can accomplish. Okay, that is all for the main meaning, so let's turn to the other, more controversial possibility for manifest. Courtney, what is this all about? Right, so you know how the primary definition is about people concluding things are true based on what they see or experience? Yeah. Well, I would say that manifest can also mean you cause something to become true just by thinking it will or wishing it would. The key phrase here is manifested it to happen, i.e. by thinking of and hoping for a given possibility or reality, you make it come true. I thought we were done with philosophy. Not quite, but this is a very common idea, one that people voice all the time, either seriously or jokingly. Like, if I'm heading to the farmer's market and I think to myself, man, I sure hope there's some fresh mangoes there this week, and then sure enough there are mangoes, I might say, wow, it's as if I manifested it to happen, which is to say, it feels like my hoping for or thinking of the mangoes caused them to be there. You don't have to think that's actually what's going on, but I think it's fair to say that as a whimsical idea, it occurs to a lot of people. What about the more serious side of manifesting things to happen? Like, there are theories of psychology that say optimism is helpful because if you think you're happy and things will be all right, your very state of mind will make them so, will manifest these good things to happen. Sure. Think of it as putting on your positive pants. If you go through each day cheery and hopeful, your day becomes cheery and your hopes will more likely be rewarded because, as the theory goes, optimistic and persevering people are more successful, whereas bitter types who pull on a pair of cynical slacks every day are probably doomed to failure, mainly because they expect it, so therefore they manifest bad things to happen. I imagine the same goes for those who put on their melancholy mittens. Mm-hmm. Also pessimistic pajamas. Well, that's no way to go through life. Um, I think you see this self-fulfilling prophecy play out in sports a lot, too. Like, think of all the victorious players in post-game interviews who say, We knew we could win. We believed it every second of the game. Coach said so, and we never doubted him. Not even when we were down 40 points in the third quarter. The crowd was booing, and half our players had defected to the other team. So, in this setting, if the players had given up or lost hope, then they obviously would have lost the game. So clearly what they're saying here is that they manifested the win to happen by means of their own faith that it could happen. Right. It's basically an I can because I think I can situation. Think about all those children's stories where wonderful things occur or imaginary worlds become real only because the children believe and therefore manifest their beliefs to happen. 
To pick one example, and there are so many, in the tale of Peter Pan, there is this dramatic scene in which the small fairy Tinkerbell would have ceased to be if it were not for the intervention of children everywhere, declaring that they did, in fact, believe in fairies. While it's not clear whether the existence of fairies as an entire class was hanging in the balance here, at least one of them was in a bad spot, and was happily preserved by the staunch conviction of multitudes of children that it was possible for her to exist in the first place. It's a beautiful moment. But in ordinary conversation, where the lives of magical creatures are less often at stake, people talk about manifesting things to happen more in the context of either anticipating an improbable scenario that later actually occurs, or pushing yourself to great achievements by convincing yourself that you have what it takes. All right, how about some examples for this form of manifest? Example number one, I knew we would find our way out of this corn maze eventually, said Megan in a triumphant tone. I just shut my eyes and imagined us emerging from the field at last, exhausted but alive. And just a few hours later, sure enough, we've made it. I must have manifested it to happen, I guess. Example number two, Come on, please have the special today be lamb kebabs, pleaded Matt as he scanned the sign outside his favorite lunch spot. Hey, would you look at that? It is the special. I've manifested it to happen. Well, what do you think? Well, I'm more convinced, I guess, that manifested it to happen is a useful phrase, but I'll have to try it on for size for a little bit and see how it feels. Hey, if you believe it's useful, it will be. Well, that is it for the show today. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and thank you so much, Courtney, for joining me and contributing that intriguing take on Manifest. The pleasure was all mine. Thanks for having me. Now, while I'm sure that my hoping for more listeners will manifest that possibility to happen, to some extent, I could probably use your help as well. So feel free to spread the word about the show. And this is for your own good as well, because your own intelligence and good taste in podcasts will be manifested by telling your friends about this show. But for now, the fact that this episode is wrapping up is manifested by that music you hear. So we'll say so long from the RAV4 Studios. We hope you enjoyed this edition of the Word of the Day podcast. I'm Jamie Silva, and we'll see you next time.